Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Now whatever you're running from, it's a Goliath in your life chasing you. And you need to turn around and confront it, deal with it and get it over with. We're going to talk tonight about passing the going through test. We're talking about how we're tested in life and let's look first at James chapter 1 verse 12. We always want promotion but we don't always want to be tested and tried first to see if we're actually ready for that promotion that we're asking for. So James 1 12. Blessed, happy, and to be envied is the man who's patient under trial and stands up, stands up under temptation. For when he has stood the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. It's time for us to stop running from things. It's time to start confronting things and facing things and dealing with things and locating maybe some of the hard to do and more unpleasant things in your life that you have a tendency to procrastinate on and put off and put off and put off. And I would like to send you home ready to no longer, not only to not put those things off, but ready to attack those things and say, I am not going to keep letting this thing torment me and taunt me and make me feel guilty. I'm not going to let it continue to make me feel guilty. How many of you know that when we put it off and put it off and put it off and we know we're supposed to do it, all it does is make us feel guilty. But it's time for me to face the Goliaths in my life. We've all got them, you know. Goliath could be a giant of debt. A lifetime of bad relationships. You just don't know how to get along with people. A lot of bad choices. So now instead of beginning to make good choices, sometimes we just want to sit around and feel sorry for ourselves because our life is in such a mess. Perhaps Goliath for you is a life that's just seriously out of order in, in lots of areas. Maybe you don't have one Goliath. Maybe you've got his whole family. And one thing I want to say really early in this message is, and I don't want you to forget this. When I'm finished tonight and you may think, you know what, well, man, I got 20 things in my life that I need to do that with. Take them one at a time. You don't have to overcome everything all at once. You just need to be making progress. Amen? Because if you try to look at the whole thing at once, it's going to overwhelm you. So what you need to do is ask God to help you choose an area that you need to get straightened out. You need to confront with Jesus by your side. And then you're going to work with God on that thing until you know that that Goliath has been slain. And then God will bring you another one. <laughs> Perhaps your Goliath is a dirty house. Some people are out trying to cast out devils and they don't even have authority over a sink full of dirty dishes yet. <laughs> Maybe it's an addiction of some kind. Maybe it's a broken heart that's been bleeding for way, way, way too long. I think I need to say that again. Maybe it's a broken heart, a bruise or a wound emotionally that's been bleeding for way, way, way too long. And you know what? God wants to help you. He'll give you beauty for ashes, but you've got to give up your ashes to get the beauty. Now, that's about a four-part series, so I'll just leave that there for now. Perhaps you have an anger issue. That's a big Goliath. Perhaps it's a bitterness issue or a You're, you're easily offended, you're touchy, you're insecure. I want you to understand tonight that those are just not your hang-up. 
or your weakness or, or your thing or your problem. Or, but they're Goliaths in your life. They're giants in your life. But I, I also need to tell you that if you're a Christian, you are a giant killer. <laughs> you may not know it yet, but you will know it by the time you get out of here tonight. You are a giant killer. Now, we want to look for just a little bit at David and the story of Goliath because there's so many lessons that we can learn from this. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning in verse 32. 1 Samuel 17, 32, David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of this Philistine. I'll go out and fight with him. Now, David is just a young boy and he's been out in the field taking care of sheep. And his brother belittled him, said unkind things to him when the prophet came to anoint a new king and knew it was to be of that household. They thought so little of David that they didn't even bring him in from the field to be considered. But even when you're being slighted by other people, God can have his eye on you and he can have you in a place where he's training you for greatness. Amen. So all of these Israelites standing around staring at this giant, the giant's making fun of Israel and it's really bothering David. He, he doesn't like the fact that all of these so-called men of God are just standing around letting Goliath rule. And so he said, I'll go. Well, they didn't think David could go and, you know, no, you can't do that. You're too young. You're too this. You're too that. And in verse 34, David said to Saul, your servant kept his father's sheep. And while I was doing that, there came a lion and then a bear, and they took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after it and killed, the killed it, delivered the lamb. Your servant killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be just like one of them. You know, God started with a little Goliath and then a little bigger Goliath. You know, there's a lion and then the bear is bigger than the lion and now we get this huge giant. Have you ever noticed that sometimes God will call you to conquer little things and then it's a bigger thing? And You know, sometimes you think, is this ever going to be over with? Well, I don't want to disappoint you, but probably not. <laughs> because if God were to reveal to any one of us right now all the issues that we have, we would probably just fall over dead. But he's good to us and he just shows us a little bit at a time, works with us on that, then shows us a little bit at a time and works on that. God is good. And then in verse 40, I'm just skipping through here a little bit. When David did go out to fight Goliath after they finally agreed to let him and Saul said, well, if you're going to go here, take my armor. And David tried to do that. And he said, I, I can't do this. This is not my way. This is not how God's going to work through me. And then we see God do something very unconventional, like I mentioned last night. David took five smooth stones and a slingshot, and he killed that giant. Didn't use the ordinary weapons, didn't get out the big sword and the big spear and all the body armor. He just kind of did what was in his heart, a simple little thing, but God anointed it. And you got to understand that if you will just do what you can do, God will anoint that and you can have a miracle in your life. But you're a partner with God and, and you, you can pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And I don't suggest that you get in works of the flesh and just start doing a bunch of stuff to make something happen. But as you pray, God's going to show you something to do. At some point in time, God's going to show you something to do. And if you don't do it, then God's not going to do anything either. Because you have a part and God has a part. He won't do your part and you can't do his part. Let me say it again. If you do what you can do, God will do what you cannot do. Now, I want us to look a little bit more at this because I just think it gets better and better. When David went out to face this Goliath, 
David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear. I'm in verse 45. You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. He had all the big armor. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. <laughs> See, he really didn't even probably need the stones and the slingshot. He knew what he needed. I come to you in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, whom you have defied. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will smite you, and I will cut off your head, and I will give the corpses of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. <laughs> you know what? Don't ever run at Goliath with your mouth shut. <laughs> Always make sure you're prophesying ahead of time what's going to happen. He didn't run at him, oh, I'm afraid you're really big and I'm so little and I hope this works. He's like, look, buddy, this is it for you because I'm coming at you with the name of the Lord of hosts. And this day I will cut off your head and you will not. And this will happen and that will happen and that will happen. Verse 47, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. Now, verse 48 is the verse that I'm really after. And when the Philistine came forward to meet David, David got scared and ran from the problem and went around the mountain one more time. <laughs> David ran quickly toward the battle line. He didn't run away, he ran toward. And I would imagine that everybody in the building can use this message in some way, shape, or form. Maybe some of you more than others because there are people in here who've been walking with God for many years and you shouldn't have as many problems as you had years ago. Hopefully you've only got one or two little Goliaths left in your life. But the point is, I want you to go home with a brand new attitude. And that attitude is, I'm a giant killer. And I'm not running from my problems anymore. I'm not going to run from the issues in my life. If I've made a mess out of my finances and I've gotten myself in debt, I'm going to take responsibility for it. I'm going to stop blaming. I'm going to stop making excuses. And God, if you will show me what you need me to do to get out of this mess, I will do it in Jesus' name. Now, don't throw stones at me when I say this, but you know how a lot of people take care of themselves physically is a big issue in their lives. And they're addicted to this and that and something else. And Well, I'm addicted to sugar and I'm addicted to chocolate. And if I eat one cookie, I've got to eat a dozen. No, you don't. You're a giant killer. <laughs> Stop saying things like that. Stop letting a piece of pie rule you and boss you around. <laughs> Don't get up every morning thinking, oh, you know, I know I need to start a diet. <laughs> well, I know I need to. I know I need to. God, I just don't know what my problem is. <laughs> I could probably tell you, but you might not like me if I did. It's not easy, but you can do it. The longer you've had a problem, the more rooted it is in your life. But you are a giant killer. And in the name of Christ, with him by your side, you can do whatever you need to do. Now, we don't, don't all need to look like Twiggy. If you want to know the truth, I think Eve had a little meat on her bones in the garden. We don't all have the same body shapes or the same body sizes and people are just put together differently. But what you need to just start praying is that God will help you feel good and look good and eat right and have energy and that you will weigh what he wants you to weigh, whatever that is. You know, we get too obsessed with it in our nation. And the bottom line is, is if it's an issue to you, then... Don't let it rule you anymore. Don't try to get rid of the whole problem in two weeks. 
just get some good habits and you'll be amazed over a period of time if it takes a year if it takes two years as long as you're making progress then you're gonna feel good about that I think we do too many instant quick fixes and then we end up right back where we started and sometimes worse off whatever the problem is you need to go home and confront it if you have an anger issue you need to make a decision that is a giant in my life I spend way too much time angry and I'm not gonna waste my time like that anymore I'll impart a revelation to you you're not gonna go through life and get everything the way you want it all the time you need that revelation again you're not going to go through life and get everything you want all the time and you need to learn to be happy anyway you need to trust God if that's what God wants you to get then he'll get it to you and if it's not coming to you right now then just be a happy camper anyway now what are you going to need to do to be free you're going to need to study you're going to need to look up every scripture in the Bible on anger and you need to write them out in longhand and put them on your computer if you use that and put them on your whatever you call all those gizmos you carry around I've got a Blackberry I, you know what iPods and iPads and you know whatever they they got it all out there amen I have made progress I have a Mac computer I'm still learning how to operate it but I got one hallelujah And then you're going to need to pray and you're going to need to read books and even if you have to you might need to get a little professional help but one thing's for sure you got to make your mind up I will not stay angry the rest of my life I will not keep bleeding on the inside the rest of my life because of something that was done to me 20 years ago I am not going to get stuck in a moment in my life and give up my future because of something that's over and done with that I can never go back and undo I will have a whole heart and I will be healed from these wounds and bruises because Jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted so I'm just asking you to begin to confront issues in your life so many people live in fear well it's time to do it afraid so many people are insecure they're just wounded and bruised all the time because there's a lot of harsh rude crude people in the world and you can be healed from that you can you can be so confident of who you are in Christ that you will never be bothered again by anybody else's rejection amen all right now Acts chapter 7 verse 23 we got some good stuff here Acts chapter 7 verse 23 I'm going to show you over the next half an hour or so that what you run away from you're going to run back into somewhere else in your life and if God's telling you to confront something and you run from it God will make you go back and deal with that issue or you will not be able to go on when I began to try to serve God seriously and I knew he was calling me into ministry there was a couple things that God really dealt with me about from my past that I needed to go back and take care of one of them was he told me I needed to go confront my father because all the years that he had abused me that had just been nobody talked about it it was just like he didn't talk about it I didn't talk about it my mother didn't talk about it nobody talked about it and I had this huge mess in my life and I'd never even said anything to him because I was so afraid of him and God told me that I had to go and confront him and I had to sit down and say it's time that we talk about what you did to me well you don't know you you don't even begin to know how scared I was because he manipulated and controlled me with fear for years but can I tell you that if I wouldn't have done that I wouldn't be here now I mean that because that was a Goliath in my life and I could not just keep avoiding it and running from it and trying to ignore it and acting like that it never happened see I thought when I walked away from 
his house when I was 18, my problem was over. But I got away from the problem, but I still had the problem in me. It was in my soul. It was in my thinking. It was in my will. It was in my emotions. It was in the way I talked, the way I acted, the way I did life, the way I did relationships. And I had to confront that giant. Because you see, that was something that bothered me. And when there's things in your past that you always have to spend your life being afraid somebody's going to find out, then you need to be, do the brave thing and you need to bring it out in the open. Because once you bring it out, then it can no longer threaten you. Your secrets can make you sick. Secrets are a very, very heavy burden. In Acts chapter 7, beginning in verse 23, talking about Moses, who when he was born, they were killing all the children. And so his mother hid him and actually someone in Pharaoh's family found him and raised him and he became a son to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh didn't know who he really was, that he was really an Israelite. So he was educated in, in Egypt and had the finest of everything. When he came into his 40th year, it came into his heart to visit his kinsmen, the children of Israel, to help them and to care for them. And on seeing one of them being unjustly treated, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian and slaying him. He expected his brethren to understand. <laughs> I love this part because, you know, when we're doing what we think God wants us to do, we just expect people to understand. <laughs> and, you know, one of the ways that Satan comes against us and tries to hurt us and wound us is by people not understanding. God was granting them deliverance by his hand. Taking it for granted that they would accept him. <laughs> but they didn't. Moses wanted to help them and they rejected him. And he didn't get it. Why they didn't get it. It's like, hey guys, I'm trying to lead you out of this mess. God sent me. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. And then on the next day, he suddenly appeared to some who were quarreling and fighting among themselves. And he urged them to make peace. And be reconciled, saying, men... You are brothers. Why do you abuse and wrong one another? Whereupon the man who was abusing his neighbor pushed Moses aside saying, Who appointed you a ruler and an umpire and a judge over, over us? Do you intend to slay me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? At that reply, Moses sought safety by flight into the country of Midian where he became the father of two sons. And after 40 years, <laughs> now, here's the thing. Did God tell him to run away? He ran away. Now, he learned a lot out in the desert, and God used him 40 years later in a mighty way to lead the Israelites out of bondage, the same thing he tried to do 40 years before. And he had a lot to learn. He tried to take things into his own hands, he felt like it was the right time. Maybe it wasn't the right time. But my point is, is that maybe he could have learned it quicker if he would have stayed in Egypt and confronted the issue head on rather than running from it. Maybe if he would have went to Pharaoh and told him the truth. Maybe Pharaoh loved him enough and God would have given him enough favor that things could have turned out drastically different. But he ran. Everybody say he ran. Now I want you to watch this, because this just gets really, really good. Verse 30, And when 40 years had gone by, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel in the flame of a burning bush. When Moses saw it, he was astonished and marveled at the sight. But when he went close to investigate, there came unto him a voice, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses trembled and was terrified, so that he did not venture to even look. And the Lord said, remove the sandals from off your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Now verse 34. Because I have most assuredly seen the abuse and the oppression of my people in Egypt. 
And because I've heard their sighing and their groaning, I have come down to rescue them. So now come and I will send you back to Egypt. Why am I making such a big deal out of that? Because God sent him right back to the place he ran from 40 years ago. I'm here to tell you that whatever you're running from, it's a Goliath in your life chasing you. And you need to turn around and confront it, deal with it, and get it over with. Well, if you've been watching the program today and you're going through something that's very, very, very difficult, I just want to encourage you that God is faithful. Don't pay too much attention to how you feel. That doesn't mean that your feelings are not important to God. But you can't really base your decisions on how you feel because when you're in a time that's really difficult, feelings can go pretty wild. Maybe you've gotten a bad report from the doctor or maybe you've had a problem in a relationship or it's a financial problem. Maybe you just feel so lonely you feel like you can't go on. But I want to encourage you to go on. I want to encourage you to take that next step of faith because you know what? You could be just one or two steps away from your breakthrough. The enemy, and we all have enemies, always wants to just wear us out. He wants to get us to the point where we just say, I cannot go through this anymore. I give up. But I'm encouraging you today not to ever give up on God's good plan for your life. We do go through tests, but they help us build character, the godly character that Jesus displayed during his time here on earth.